Hey everyone, Kevin O'Doon here. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about reviews on YouTube and touch upon the negative side of it, a side that isn't really discussed as much as it should be. Now, reviews are important to YouTube. I think it's really important for people who use YouTube. As consumers, you want to see reviews. If you're spending a lot of money on a phone, on a laptop, on a camera or something, you don't want to just go and, you know, spend a thousand bucks on something without looking at the reviews first. I think it'd be a little bit silly for anyone to go out there and just impulse buy. There's nothing wrong with impulse buying um, per se, but I think if you're investing in something, it is worth going out and looking at reviews. It doesn't matter what it is. And, you know, it could be something like a car, it could be anything. Now, in order to do reviews, you need to go out and actually spend money. And I think in general, YouTubers find it hard to make money on the internet. You know, YouTube isn't the best way to make money on online. It really isn't. And you hear a lot about the top YouTubers making a lot, a lot of money. You know, people will talk about PewDiePie making a huge amount of money. But the reality is that majority of YouTubers and the majority of channels that you probably uh, subscribe to, they aren't making a lot of money. You know, I've only got over a thousand subscribers. I've got about 600,000 views and I'm clearing less than 75 bucks a month, which is pretty pitiful. Uh, especially when you consider the amount of products I need to buy just to, you know, do product reviews and all the equipment and all that. I'm running at 100% loss now. I really, really enjoy doing this, so I'm not caring about that side of things. But I think it is important to understand why people are looking to make money on YouTube. It's an investment of time. It's an investment of money. And people should be paid for, you know, what they do on YouTube. So there's going to be advertising. And you know, whenever there is content, you're going to get advertisers and companies who want to push products to th that person's audience. And I think there has to be a happy medium somewhere. But the problem is that there's kind of a lack of um, disclaimers about all this. And there are a lot of companies who are quite pushy about the way that they, you know, they push their products online. I touched upon this the other day. Um, where Yi, I spoke about Yi, and I talked about how bad their customer service was. And I always, you know, I always want to do that on my channel. If something sucks, I want to say it sucks. But companies obviously don't want that. The thing is, when you get to a certain level on YouTube, um, when you get to like a few thousand subscribers, more opportunities arise. So take my YouTube channel, for example, and... You know, the, the level of uh, the kind of entry point for starting a YouTube channel is quite low. If, say, for example, you just want to start using your phone and just start doing vlogs, all you need is your phone. Pretty much, you don't really need to spend a lot of money. You can then buy equipment as you go along. But it's a little bit different for a channel like mine. If you're doing product reviews, you need products to review. It's kind of catch-22 because in order to buy expensive products to get more exposure and get more subscribers and to buy the products that you know that people will actually be buying, you need to spend a lot of money. But if your channel isn't making money, you know, it, you know, it becomes hard because you need to spend all your own money to do it. That's why a lot in the past, which is prob probably a bad a mistake on my part, but I've reviewed a lot of cheaper items. Some of those items I've had sent free by the manufacturer. Some of them sent them out for a review on Amazon and, um, you know, like cheap $10 to $50 kind of range. Um, and then I'll give my thoughts on it. For more expensive items, I've had to buy them myself, which is why most of the expensive items that I've reviewed have been things that I've needed, like a camera, like equipment like this. Now, it is Cash22 because I've, I've emailed a lot of companies and I've said, listen, I've got a tech channel. I'd love to do a review of this. I'll do a few videos. Could you send out a unit? I'll test it and then I'll send it back. I'll ship it back to you. 99% of companies don't reply. The ones that do generally say, I'm sorry, but your channel isn't big enough. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things. I'll, I'll probably get to the point, maybe, you know, a, a few years down the line where companies will start emailing me all the time, asking me to do reviews. But at the moment, companies don't really want to work with you. But opportunities do arise. And, you know, I passed over a thousand subscribers recently. When you get to that point, you do start getting more um, approaches from companies as far as wanting to work with you, as far as wanting to sponsor your channel, all that kind of thing. When you get to 5,000 subscribers, um, one of the services that's available to you is Famebit. Now, Famebit is probably one of the most uh, well-known companies. They call themselves 
an influencer marketing platform for branded content. They work with Canon, Activision, Adidas, Sony, Conair, and Seriously. And um, what they'll do is they'll pay you money to do a review on your channel. So for a, a channel like mine, like, that's amazing. You know, I'm doing reviews anyway. If someone could pay me money for a review, that's fantastic. You know, they get exposure. I get content from my from my channel, from my subscribers. Surely everyone wins. But what they don't tell you in all this fancy purple and blue marketing is that um, they don't want a review per se. It is just an advertorial. It's just a sponsored message. They don't want you to actually do a proper review. There's a really good YouTuber I like called Lon Seidman, and he, he speaks about this. And he sp spoke about how he joined Famebit and he wasn't happy with the way that they'd done business. They were basically saying to him, you have to do a positive review. He said in one of the emails, they said that, I hope you can understand that a brand would not be able to pay a creator to do a negative review of a product. That's like Michael Jordan bashing a new pair of Nikes and getting paid to do it. So he ended up he ended up getting banned from Famebit because he wasn't going to do a 100% positive review. He was going to do an honest review. And this is the problem. Companies like this who work with top brands like Canon and Adidas and Sony, they don't want proper reviews. They want 100% positive reviews. They might not say that on paper. That are, I'm sure the company will say, no, we want fair reviews. They don't really. They want to push, you know, companies like this, they want to push a positive agenda. They want to tell the world how amazing products are. And I guess you can understand if they're paying a few hundred dollars for a review on a YouTube channel, they don't want any criticism. Why would they pay for negative publicity? But, you know, there does become a, bit, a little bit of conflict of interest. Um, now, Lont, he touched upon this and he went through a lot of videos and he noted that all the videos, it was uh, the example he used was a ring video doorbell review. And he looked at all the reviews of it and he noticed that the vast majority of them were 100% positive and they didn't disclose that it was a paid advertisement or a paid review. There was only one person apparently that he checked and they did disclose like this and I was paid to review this. Now, I think that, you know, look at it from my channel, if someone sent me money to review, say this phone, I think it is important to say they sent me out this to review. It is important for me to say, listen, I am paid to do this. I think it is worthwhile being up front with your, with your viewers and just pointing it out. If you do that and your review is fair and the criticism is fair, you know, you give constructive criticism, you say this is good, this isn't good, I don't like that. I don't think there's anything wrong because really we, you kind of need to work in it you need to work with companies. The reality is YouTubers don't really make a lot of money. And if companies want reviews of the products and reviewers need products to review, then they need to kind of meet in the middle. But there is a kind of dirty side to YouTube where there's a lot of YouTubers giving these 100% positive reviews and they'll do it for money because, well, as I said, you know, if I'm getting about, say about three and a half thousand, four thousand views per day on my channel, which is what I get now, and I'm getting 75 bucks per month. So, you know, I've had 600,000 views in my channel so far, and I'm only getting $75 a month, which doesn't really pay for anything. If someone then comes along and say, you know, they say, do one video and we'll pay you $300. I guess human nature, it is easy to understand why people do it. It is, understand, it is easy to understand why people just give overwhelmingly positive reviews Google Ad AdSense isn't really a great earner. And if you can get four times as much earnings for your whole month of videos and for one video, it's easy to see why it's a slippery slope for a lot of YouTubers and why they do adopt that. So I don't want to criticize people who do that too much because I guess you can see that. Now for me, I am a relatively new YouTuber. I've been doing it a few years, but I'm just kind of, I've been taking it seriously the last year or so. And um, I am a new YouTuber in that respect, but I'm not new to the game per se. I started working in 2000 online. I created a lot of websites. So I've been doing reviews. I think my first review website was in 2001. And I was doing reviews on my websites of products and things like that since back since 2001. All the websites, all the blogs that I've owned. If you search for Kevin Modoon online and review, you'll probably find thousands of articles that I've published. So I've seen how the industry works. I know how it works. I deal with it on a weekly basis. 
on my blog, I get requests for reviews, for reviews all the time. They'll say, oh, we'll send you this, we'll do a review. And I'll say, okay, I'll look at the good points and the bad points and they'll go, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? And when I tell them, well, you know, if you pay for a review or if you send me something for review, I will give an honest review. I will look at the good points. I will, you know, mention what I don't like and all that. And at least three quarters of the people who contact me, when I make it clear that I'm not going to give them a 100% positive review, they just refuse to work with me, essentially. They don't want the review. They don't want me to actually do an honest review. What they want is just a sponsored message on a website or on a YouTube channel that's got traffic, that's got an audience. Now, this is, unfortunately, the world that we live in. And um, I think I think it's, f for me, I, I don't want to criticise people too much, but I, I have seen it in the blogging world as well, where blogs will just give... They'll, they'll sell their soul for a commission. They'll, they'll say anything on their blog in order to make money. And, and if it means they get a commission or they get, a, you know, they sent money or a product or something, they'll say anything and they don't care. I think it's quite short-sighted though because in the short term, you make money. In the long term, I think you're going to lose your audience or you're not going to create or generate an audience, you know, because um, really long-term the real value for any YouTube channel, for any blog, for any website is being true to the audience and just giving you honest opinion. People aren't going to come to your channel or come to your website if all you did was just give sponsored 100% positive messages for Sony or for Canon. Or, you know, you need to give people value. You need to give the audience value. I think that there's a lot of YouTubers who are kind of misinformed about this and they're not really looking at the long-term ramifications of what they're doing. Um, Whilst I can understand why they're selling out because they're making no money, I do think it's short-sighted. And I think longer term, if you want to make it as a YouTuber, you want to, you know, give value. And when something's bad, just say it's bad. And when something's good, say it's good. Because no one's going to trust you when you, you know, you if you say everything is good, when something comes along on your table and it is actually a good product, no one's actually going to know if it's good or not because you sell out and, you, you know, you're always saying everything's positive. From a company's point of view, I realize that they don't want to, you know, give, they don't want to pay for advertising that could be negative. But at the same time, I think that can be short-sighted as well. I think if they start pushing an agenda that they only want positive reviews, then it, it becomes hard to trust any reviews of their products online. You know, say, say for example, that a big company like Sony or Google or Samsung, and they paid all these people for positive reviews, Whenever you saw a review of a, you know, a Samsung product or something, if you knew that their company was pushing, you know, such a positive agenda through advertising, through marketing or influence, mar influence uh, marketing as they call it, you wouldn't know whether to trust it. So I think that can be short-sighted as well. I'd like to hear what you guys think about all this, but I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that um, I'm not immune to this because I think I'd be a liar if I said, if... If a company sends out, um, and, and I'm sure some of you guys have read about this with Amazon reviews, but I think if if a company sends me out a camera and it costs two thousand pound, and you know I would maybe rave about it, I'd say this is amazing because you know this is an expensive camera, it, it's amazing. But there's always that difference, you know. There is a difference between getting something sent out to you and paying for something, you know. As good as it's something that I, I always try and be impartial. It's all I always try and not be influenced by that. But there's always that difference. If you've paid for something and you've saved up for something and you've paid for it and it doesn't quite work the way you want it, you do treat it a little bit different from a company that's sent out. And it, it's just the kind of human nature, I guess. But it's something that I, I try not to do. But you know, I'm I'm not perfect either. Um. I'd like to hear what you guys think about this. I think it is something that does affect reviews on YouTube. There are a lot of reviewers that just sell out and they don't care and they'll do anything for a buck. Again, I think it is short-sighted. I think longer term for companies and reviewers, if they want to keep having a good relationship, I think it is important for companies to understand that re reviewers have a job to do as well and they need to be impartial and they need to say what's good and they need to say what's bad. If companies can't do that, if they can't allow reviewers to do proper reviews, then what reviewers like myself have to do is basically just give the finger up to companies and say, well, 
F you, I don't want you to send out the product. I'd rather wait, save up my money, and pay for something and just buy it myself and I'll say whatever I want. Now that's ideally in an ideal world, that's what I want to do. I don't want to rely on companies. I don't want to have to deal with them. I want to just go buy something, use it, review it, and then ship it out, give it away in a competition or do whatever. The reality is it's very expensive to do that and YouTube uh, doesn't make a lot of money. That is what I'd love to do in the future. Until then, I'd like to meet in the middle with companies and do honest reviews and, you know, just give full disclosure to you guys. If a company sends me out something, I'll say it in my video. I've never been paid to say something is good or I've never been paid to even review a product. But if I ever do come across, you know, um, that stage of my career where, where someone would say, yeah, we'll send you, we'll pay you $300 to advertise that, I will disclose it in the video and I'll make it clear that, you know, I have been paid. I think it is important for reviews to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this situation and I'm sure you guys realise that this is something that does go on. You just, I, I, I don't think you understand, a lot of you anyway, you might not understand how common it is for companies to really push top reviewers to say positive things and how many of top reviewers, which I wouldn't name names, but a lot of them will say anything for a quick buck. Uh, thanks for watching guys, I, I'd love to hear what you guys think about, uh, about all of this, so please do leave a comment, and until next time, thanks for watching.